welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new to this channel, a very big welcome to you as I always do to my newcomers. If you want to know more about OET and your nursing transition from your home country to other countries, then definitely this is the channel for you. If you would like to go ahead and subscribe, click on the post notification bell icon that way you wouldn't miss any time I upload videos. So I've been having a lot of questions of people asking me how to prepare for OET 2.0, which is the latest version of the OET that was introduced about two years ago. And today I'm going to be discussing how to comprehensively prepare for your OET exam and ask it at first attempt. If you are new to this channel, I always say a very big welcome to you. And to my doctor friends who just joined my family, I say thank you so much for joining us. I, I wouldn't like to say I've been biased, for addressing nurses all this while but I just wanted to niche down to nurse because I am a nurse myself but now I'll be more open because I know there are a lot of people coming into our community and very soon we hope to be doing live videos because a lot of you have, have questions that you want to ask personally one-on-one -on -one. and so as the community grows we'll be doing more on live streaming so that you can ask any question that you want to ask for those of you who want to know about monetary issues, about grocery shopping, I will be doing them talking about indebly about your expenditure, your income, your salary and all that. But because it is a program I am building, I want to start from the scratch so that everybody can benefit and understand the concept at the end of the day. When I took my OET results, I had 430 in listening. 360 in both reading and speaking and I had 300 in writing and if you are converting it into grades I had grade B in lesson, grade B in speaking, grade B in reading and a grade C.5 Sorry, a C, a C plus. I was tempted to say 6.5 because I was used to the IELTS in the band school a C plus in writing and that was you know good to go and at the end of the video, I'll be talking about my personal test date experience. So if you want to know what actually happened on test date, then you like to watch the video to the end so that I will share those tips and what I observed personally at the test center where I took my examination. So today we are going to look at how to in-depthly prepare for OET and ask your result at first attempt. As I have been saying in my previous videos, I have walked the walk. I took the OET test and I passed it at first attempt with 12 weeks of intense preparation and so anything I'm going to say are based on personal experiences that I have gained and gathered and I want to share them with you. I don't want to be impulsive but you can try it and I know it is definitely going to work for you. And so I did four weeks tuition with Success Academy as I've always been saying in my previous videos and after the 12 weeks, after the four weeks tuition, I went ahead to do my personal studies where I did things to help myself because after the tuition, if you don't help yourself, you are still not going to make it. Though OIT is health related, if you don't put in much effort, you will not get the results you want at the end of the day. And so the rest of the eight weeks were personal studies that I did and there are things that are related to myself. Let's say out of the eight weeks, I used one week to travel in and out of my country to set for my test. So I didn't count that one week as part of my preparation. So for the rest of the seven weeks, I had a study plan that really helped me. So this is how it looks. I'll be looking more into this book because this is what I use to help myself. So I did it a step by step week for the seven weeks. I had listening, reading, writing and speaking. And I'll tell you how to prepare comprehensively for each of the modules. Now let's have an overview of how I did the whole preparation. So for the first week, I do one module a day and then on one day, I do a review or an overview of all the modules and then the next two days, I do some more preparations where I time myself and use my time management effectively. If you ask me how to prepare, I'm going to talk about it. So let's say for week one, I try as much as possible that a day doesn't go by that I do not prepare for OET. It is really intensive and if you know what you want, you are really going to make it at the end of the day. This preparation can also be used for IELTS and for other examinations that you want to set for. But because OET and IELTS are English test preparations, 
and you are using them for a purpose you have to comprehensively prepare for them and so for week one you are going to do all the four modules so on mondays i was doing listening tuesdays reading wednesdays writing thursdays speaking fridays i do an overview a general overview of oet the examination environment things that i used to prepare or things that i would need in the examination centers how to go about each and every of the module and then on weekends that is saturday and sundays because i have so much to do i just do more preparations so i do one of each of the modules so maybe on a saturday i will do listening and reading and then on sunday i do speaking and writing so that is how i was doing it so the second week i changed it on mondays maybe i wouldn't do listening i'll do reading then tuesday i'll do writing so i always reschedule or i always you know reprogram them to suit my taste and my schedule for the day but as i said a day doesn't go by that i do not practice or put my hand on any OET material and that is what was what was really really helping me the next thing is that i was printing out all the materials that i had available for my tutor as well as the ones that i had from you know friends and all that so i print these materials out because i wanted it to be practical like an exam day test experience and this really really helped now let's look at how each of the modules work both listening and reading have 42 questions and they are put in three parts that is part a part b and part c and the time lapse between the listening and the reading test is very very short so after your listening your papers are taken away from you and immediately you start your reading so you have to build on your time management and how to be focused for a longer time and so for the reading i will tell you that read more of articles and podcasts new letters newsletters and newspapers this way it sharpens your listening skills for the reading part a you have marching headings where you have to you know sharpen your skills on scheming and scanning of a text because you'll be generating your answers from like a paragraph you will read and you know select your answers your first 20 answers from this whole text and for the part b and c there are multiple choice questions where you'll be reading a text and then you, you summarize your entire answer coming from that text and the part C, you read a sentence and you try to understand the opinion, the discussion, or whatever the speaker is saying. And so you have to sharpen your scheming skills, you have to sharpen your scanning skills, you have to sharpen your reading skills, as well as your summary skills. Make sure that every day you are reading newspapers and newsletters, you are reading podcasts, and you are building on your reading skills, as well as your time management skills. Because the first um, part, which is the part A, is 15 minutes for 20 questions. And you have the 45 minutes for the rest of the exams. And after the 15 minutes, your paper is going to be taken away from you for the part A. So if you made a mistake or you forgot to put in any answer, you are not permitted to go back. So work extensively on your time management skills. Because OET is generated from Australia and is affiliated with the United Kingdom, you would hear most of your accents and pronunciations coming from Australian English as well as English from the United Kingdom. And so you have to be familiar with your accents from the United Kingdom and from Australia. So what I was doing was that a day doesn't go by that I do not listen to British Broadcasting Corporation news as well as news from foreign languages. I made sure that every day I was listening to BBC, I was getting familiar with the Australian accents as well. I was listening to podcasts where I use, where they use most of, you know, the Australian and the British accent. That way you are able to understand how each word, word is pronounced. So for example, some words that we pronounce in Africa, we pronounce in Nigeria, we pronounce, you know, in India and in Asia. Are not the same as the British will pronounce it, are not the same as the Australians will pronounce it. And in the test date or on the examination date, you are going to hear the accent coming from Australian English. So you have to be very familiar with those accents. For both reading and listening, spelling mistakes are much more. But in the listening, there is a little bit of 
consideration especially if you heard the word and the spelling is quite closer to what you heard even if you spelled it wrongly you can be considered in the listening but in the reading you are not going to be considered if your spelling is wrong so get to know the right spelling of each word you spell in the test on the test date and when you are practicing practice as though it were the real test date that you're practicing put in much time make sure you hear whatever the you know recording is going to say and mind you the listening is played once it just plays once and you are not going to be repeated or it's not going to be repeated for you to listen so make sure that anything that you are hearing you really heard it well and you are going to spell it either closer to what you heard or exactly as what you heard so i have to chip in this advice when you are practicing for an english language test you should try as much as possible to communicate in english right from day one until the day you write your examination finally if you do this, you are going to be fluent in your English language skills. You are going to sharpen your English language and also try as much as possible to use a lot of lexical resources. If there are words that you come across in your studies that you do not understand, you have to go to your dictionary to look out for the meaning of these words. Learn the pronunciation, the correct pronunciation, the intonation of these words so that you incorporate them in your day-to-day -day activities if you are on the ward or you are in the hospital setting, try as much as possible to communicate with your patients or with your colleagues in the English language. Try as much as possible to avoid pigeon and broken English. This goes to my Nigerian brothers and sisters and even like Africans and some Ghanaians are fond of using local language, pigeon language, broken language, short short you know, words or abbreviations which do not help their English language communication and their fluency. And so you have to get rid of all these things. Communicate in English with your colleagues, with your patients, because in the listening, you have your questions, you know, coming as a conversation from a patient or a nurse, from a doctor or a nurse with a patient. And the answers are most of the time going to come from the patient. And so as you communicate effectively in your work setting, you have control about the English language skills and thus way you'll be able to elicit your answer on the real test date. So now we move on to the writing. With the writing, you have three types of writings that you'll be seeing. That is, it's either a referral letter, a transfer letter or a discharge letter. But most of the times you are going to see a referral letter. That is the most common type of letter you are going to be seeing or you're going to write. However, you should try your hands on all the types of letters because you don't know what to expect on a test date. And try as much as possible to get somebody to proofread your um, essays for you. That is why it is good to attend a class so that you get an expert person to proofread your writings for you. And what I will say about the writing is that on the test date, you have 45 minutes and you have 5 minutes being reading time. Within this five minutes, you do not write anything or you do not touch the answer booklet. You just read the questions on the question paper and then you plan and program your structure and nature of your essay in your mind. After the five minutes, you write your exams or your letter and then that is the end. But I recommend that you use five minutes out of the 40 minutes to both read your questions on the test date. So when you are practicing, do say, Use five minutes to just read the question without writing anything. Use 40, 35 minutes to write your essay and use five minutes as reading time to proofread to correct any mistake that you have done. And this is how I was practicing my, aside the OET materials that I had, what I did was that whenever I went to the hospital, I tried as much as possible to take a patient's folder, go through the folder, and you know, write something out of the folder. So let's say I have a, a diabetic patient on the ward. I take those diabetic patients folder. I look through the doctor's history that has been written. And then I tell myself, okay, I'm going to write a referral letter for this patient, a community health nurse. In my mind, the patient has a wound. In my mind, the patient may have a stoma or anything that needs to be cared for. So in the letter, I'm going to write a community health nurse to either follow up and do continuous care or dress the wound for the patient, get this patient blood sugar monitored, 
every day or every other day if the patient has a stoma she should dress the stoma or do stoma care if the patient needs oxygen administration at home she should go home and you know administer the oxygen for the patient so i use the patient's folder i have in the ward setting whenever the ward is less busy i write notes out of this patient or i write a letter of this patient to a community health nurse a transfer letter to a doctor to another unit or whatever so that's how i was practicing my life so whether speaking try to speak english every day from the date of your preparation to the date of your examination speak english with everybody everywhere you find yourself in your ward centers at home and everywhere and try to get a speaking partner somebody who is also within the same preparation or have already written the text so that you can prepare with this person if you do not have anybody like that you can prepare all by yourself that is what i was doing i can look in a mirror and talk to myself so for example I am the nurse and I am the examiner all at once. So let's go. Hello, good morning, madam. How may I address you? Good morning. Just call me Jones. Oh, Mr. Jones, what, what is your problem this morning? Mm, actually, I am so much in a lot of pain. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. It looks like you are so much in pain. However, I will call the doctor to attend to you very briefly. But in the meantime, on a scale of 0 to 10, can you rate your pain? So this is an illustration. I just did everything by myself. So you have your cue card in front of you and you have to act it out. You may have all the two cue cards in front of you. So you act as a patient at this moment and the next time you are the nurse yourself. This way you are going to build your confidence and try as much as possible to speak to yourself if you don't have a speaking partner that way you can be able to build a confidence in front of everyone that also helped me actually in starting my youtube channel because i can look in front of a camera and talk all day to you as if you are in front of me and this is how it all started so before you jump on the test date or before you go into the test center know that you are going in with confidence be confident smile Introduce yourself, be polite, elicit your answers from the cue card. Don't say anything that is not in the cue card. Don't try to frame things from your own mindset. Don't think for the patient. Everything you say should be from the cue card that you have been given. Express yourself in your English confidently and fluently and learn some of the Australian accent. Try to be natural in your own way. Don't try to imitate anything or anyone. Don't try to slang or be like any of them. Be yourself, but know how the intonation of the words are. Know that some of the words need to be intonated. Know that some of the words, the words need to be stressed on so that these words you can stress on them. You can mention them correctly. Once they are pronounced correctly, you have no problem. Once you are fluent, you have no problem. You don't need to know everything about what you are going to say. Once it is within range and it is from your cue card, you are good to go. And also do not ask the questions directly as they are on the cue card. Try to reframe or paraphrase them, change the structure and nature of the question on the cue card and make them as your own. Not make them as your own like generating a question that is not on the cue card. But look on what is on the cue card and reframe it like it is coming from you. So that it to be is a role play. It has to be something that is flowing. You are acting with somebody. It has to be an actor. If you don't know how to act, please learn how to act. So these are my tips for me. Now let's go to my test day experience. In conclusion, in a nutshell, <laughs> as I was writing, in conclusion, in a nutshell, to conclude, to end, I'll say that you know what you want at the end of the day. And mind you, you have registered for OET, which is expensive, about twice the price of IELTS. You have, you are going to sponsor your journey. If you're not going to travel, you are in your own country, but you have prepared enough. Mind you, if you had tuition, the tutor is not going to write for you at the end of the day. It is yourself that is going to write. So after your four weeks tuition, you have to put in much energy, much effort, everything you have to put in 
that is why i started by sharing with you my study plan at the beginning of the video that is what i did after my four weeks tuition to help me i used seven weeks intensively to prepare for myself every day didn't pass by without me practicing at least one module in OET. and so after your tuition after the teacher has done you good by providing you with materials by telling you what to do by telling you all the t's and tips the tricks and everything the rest is to go back sit down and you know grab the models one by one get into them add your timing to it so that at the end of everything on thursday you appear confident and you are ready to answer it at first attempt now let me talk about my journey to my test center that this is going to be very comical <laughs> this is going to be very comical you know on my test date uh i had to travel from ghana to lagos and I was going by bus, mind you, my broke ass was going by bus. So I needed to spend like a week in and out of Lagos. So I did one week night duty so that I could get one week off so that I can travel. It was very hectic because after a stressful night duty, I packed my bags and baggages, something very brief, and then I headed to the, the, the bus terminal in, in Accra in Circle. And you know, I hopped into the bus, it was evening, it was an evening bus, and so I sat in the bus. The journey was very smooth to Lagos. The next day, I was in Lagos, beautiful Lagos. Lagos is nice. I have my second highest subscribers coming from Nigeria. Shout out to you all, I've been to your country twice. Lagos is very beautiful. I got to Lagos, and the test center is at GRA Ubudu, 49 Sobo Road. I'm not so sure, but not about the address. But when you register, they are going to send you all the details in your email. So when I got to Lagos, I got to my hotel room and I spent three days in the room. The hotel was very nice. If you want to travel to Lagos to take your test, send me an email so that I give you the directions to that particular hotel. It was very cheap and affordable. At night, you know, they had the cheapest going for 45 and um, Ghana cities. If you convert from Nara to cities, it was 45 cities, which was very cool for me at that time. Like I was broke, so it was okay for me at that time so i spent three days in this hotel on my test dates i went to the test center very nervous but when i got there i realized that the examiners were very nice there sorry the invigilators were very very nice they were from australia so you see all those white spaces all around and there were some nigerians also amongst them they were very nice the environment was conducive they were receptive they helped us all the way not helping us as in answering the questions for you but making sure that you're relaxed throughout the entire you know process and everything they will ask you at every point in time whether you are okay whether you need something they'll give you a pencil they'll give you an eraser because that's what you're going to use in your exam but you cannot ask anybody anything you can't exchange anything with anyone you can't giraffe people nothing and when it is stop work it is stop work they are taking the exam paper from you and you are going to do the listening reading and writing at a point when you are going for bathroom breaks you are going to be escorted to make sure you don't put anything in your pants or anything you know you don't bring anything back into the examination hall and you don't go to the washroom in groups in twos you go one 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 and all that so after the three modules we I think that the listening it went well though I was nervous I thought I couldn't make it that was the highest mark I had in all the four models I have 430 reading was crazy especially the reading part A guys prepare very well for the reading part A sometimes you get the reading part A being okay the other two models become very funny sometimes it's the other way around but on my day the reading part A was very scary I was able to answer 18 out of the 20 questions within 15 minutes and the paper was taken away and out of the 18 i was confident of getting 13 it was really really crazy but the parts b and c were cool so i think it made up for the part a and i had 360 in reading uh we moved into writing we had to write a, a letter of a patient you are a school nurse and you're writing a letter to a student to the doctor of a student 
telling the doctor about recent happenings of this child who has depression and obsessive compulsive disorder and all that. And because you know the doctor really you don't have to a good family history and all those things. It was cool. I think I wrote a little about 200 words, but it was a month and I had C plus in writing. And in speaking, it was very, very, we had a break between the three, about two hours break. I went to eat, settle myself and came. I was nervous, but the interlocutor was very kind. She made sure I was very relaxed, very, very conducive environment before we started the speaking. The speaking went so well. I think about 20 minutes we were done everything and then I came back to uh, Ghana. I arrived the next day and the results came in a month and I had blown it at the first attempt. So I wish you all the very best in the transition. For those of you who want to know about the monetary issues, we'll be discussing money because I love to talk about money as well. So we'll talk about money and into details of everything that you need to the UK, to the US, to Canada, to Australia, to Ireland, to da, da, da. Our community is growing like you guys. We'll be doing some live streams also so that I can physically see you, ask us things. If you have any questions, we put them down that day. When I'm ready, I will make announcements all over so that you can join the live stream and then we talk into details. I love you very much and until we meet again, it is bye.